Hello, I'm Noel Edmonds, and I'm about to find out how to set up a new Hornby train set. To help me, I've got Howard Leader, who's a bit of an expert on train sets. Howard, welcome. Hello, Noel. Well, I'm sure the temptation for everyone listening is to get their layout set up as quickly as possible and get the trains moving. But that's not really a good idea, is it, Howard? Just to sort of launch straight into it. No, that's right. Uh, there are one or two things that you should be aware of as you go about setting it up. So let's go through it together, step by step, and make sure we understand exactly what to do. OK, well, we've got our train set in front of us here. So where do we start? Right, well, inside the box, you'll see there's an array of track and wagons, um, a locomotive. Uh -huh. A very smart diesel. That's the one. Uh, but not all sets have wagons, of course. Some of them have carriages instead. But whatever you've got in your set, the first thing to do is to take out the main power controller. It's easy to recognize because it's the thing in the box with the two wire leads coming from it, one grey and one black. Uh -huh. And it's also in a plastic bag. That's the one. Now, you'll notice that the thicker of the two leads, the black one, has a blue and brown wire at the end, which is where we need to attach a main plug. Now, the train set operating instructions in the box is very clear on how to connect the plug, so get that up and study it carefully. OK, so if we're still not very sure about putting the plug on, I suppose it'd be a good idea to get Dad or an expert to do it for you. Yes, do that. But the most important thing is to fit the plug with a 3-amp fuse and take out the 13-amp one already in it. OK, so let's go over that again. We take out the 13-amp fuse first, and then replace it with a 3-amp one. Right. So what about the, the safety aspect, Howard? Isn't it dangerous, wiring mains electricity? Well, that's the reason for the power controller. What it actually does is drops the mains voltage down to only 12 volts, which is what feeds the railway lines. So in normal use, your train set is completely safe. Now, you might like to switch off the tape now while you go and uh, fit your plug, and then come back and turn it on again, and we'll carry on from there. Right. So once we've got a plug on the mains power controller, what do we do next? Well, the next thing is to actually get out all the track. So let's start getting the rails out. Now, I see among the various bits of track here, we've got some curves and some straights. Now, is there anything we should know about these? Well, they're all in elastic bands for a start, so be careful how you take the bands off, Noel, because although the track's flexible, the plastic sleepers underneath could break if they're too rough. OK. And uh, watch the ends of the tracks where you've got those metal prongs that stick out. Yeah, they're called fish plates, aren't they? That's right, and therefore joining the bits of track together, as well as making the electrical contact we need for the trains to run properly. Ah, they are a bit sharp. Yeah, best to watch your fingers on those. So we've got eight lengths of curved track, and then we've got the lengths of straight track as well. Hmm, and if you uh, dig into the box, you'll find this particular set also has some points. Some sets will make up with one set of points, which means you can make a siding. Or if you've got two sets of points, like this one, uh, you can make two sidings or a passing loop. But first, let's just uh, turn over one of the lengths of track. Which one? A, a curve or a straight? Well, it doesn't really matter, because on the other side, you'll see that uh, underneath there, there are two little arrows embossed on one of the sleepers. Oh, yeah. Got that? Yeah. Right. Now, if you forage in the box, you'll find your power connecting clip, which is a little black plastic clip, which clips into the rails. Is this it, with a, an A and a B on it? Yes, that's the one. Now, in fact, if you look again in your instructions leaflet, you'll find a picture of the clip. Uh, there we are, there. And it also shows you how to insert it into the track. Now, it looks here like it's best to put it in a curve at the end of a layout where you've got a bit more space on the baseboard. Yeah, and in fact, on the leaflet diagrams, it's illustrated quite clearly. So, shall I put the clip into this length of curved track? Yes, but uh, keep it turned over. Uh, see where the arrows are underneath there? You insert the clip with one prong either side of the sleeper with the arrow embossed on it. This is actually quite tricky, Howard. Yes, you do have to be careful how you put the power clip in. They're inclined to bend a bit, and uh, do make sure that the A and B markings on the clip are facing upwards. Right. Now, the strips of copper-coloured metal must be facing upwards and connecting with the bottom of the rail. OK. Where do we put the rail? Uh, put the curve at the end of the layout so that the power controller can be sighted next to it. OK, so what's next? What about a baseboard? Well, the one that I always recommend is something called Sun Dealer Hobby Board, which is a fairly dense fibre board, um, rather like the stuff that builders use. Oh, what's so special about that, then? Well, it takes track pins very easily, but it doesn't hold them too tight in case you want to take your track up again and change your layout at a later date. Oh, I see, and where do we get that from? Well, most good timber merchants should have it, uh, you might look one up in the yellow pages. What was it called again? Sun Dealer Hobby Board. And while we're on the subject, if you haven't got a proper baseboard, don't put your track or your mains power controller on the carpet. The locomotive and uh, even the track won't like the fluff very much. <laughs> OK, right. I notice we've got eight curves, 
And this obviously means that four curves makes up a semicircle. That's right, yes. But uh, before you start putting the track together, let's take a look at the lid of the box, because um, somewhere on it is the recommended layout for this set. Have you got it there, Noel? Mm -hmm. Here it is at the end. It's an oval with a passing loop. So do you reckon it's a good idea to put four of the curved pieces together first? Yeah, it can be, yes. But uh, just put the points to one side for a moment, and we'll concentrate on making the oval. So if you'd like to start joining it up... OK. Now, do we literally hold two pieces of track end-to-end -end and then just slide them together? Yeah, more or less. But make sure that the ends of the rails are inserted firmly into the fish baits. Gently oh. does it. That's it. Slide them right home. Right. Now, the fish baits, remember, uh, first they ensure that you get a good electrical connection, and secondly, they ensure smooth running of the train once the rails are all joined together. OK. I've got my four lengths of curved track together now. That's right. We'll put those down one end of the layout, and uh, I'll put my four down at the other end. And presumably, uh, all we do is just join them up with straights in between. Absolutely. So we're putting four straights in between the semicircles at each end to make up the sides of the oval. OK. Can I do just a couple more there, please? Right. Good. That looks all right, doesn't it? Seems to be all done. Yeah, that's quite straightforward. But uh, you have to be a bit careful because the fish baits are rather delicate. Now, if you haven't got anywhere permanent to set up your layout, try not to bend the track about too much when you have to take it apart. Uh -huh. Now, clearly, there are pinholes in the sections of the track. These must be for pinning the track to the baseboard. Yes, that's right. But it's not always possible. You might not have anywhere you can leave it set up permanently. If you have, however, you can buy special track pins from your local Hornby stocker. They're very slender little tacks which are designed specially for pinning your track down. Incidentally, you don't want to have a pin for every hole. Just use one pin every three or four holes. And uh, don't fix the track too tightly. It does need to have a little springiness uh, to help the train run better. OK, fine. So, with the track set up in front of us, are we ready now to run the train? <laughs> We're not quite yet. The next thing to do is to connect up the mains power controller. And you'll find that you've got one lead, the black one. Uh -huh, this one. And we've now got the mains plug on. That's it. And at the other end, there's a twin grey lead. And that's got two little plugs at the end, which fit into the rear of the power connection clip, where it's marked A and B. Now, if we find the bit of track where we've got the power connecting clip... Oh, yeah, and this curve over here... That's right. Now... Push the little plugs into the clip, push them right home. OK. And there you're ready. Good. Now put the mains plug into the wall socket and your power supply is there. So all we have to do now is put the train on the tracks and presumably it will run. That's right. OK, let's get the train out of the box. We've got a locomotive and I'm going to put a couple of trucks on there as well. Yeah, OK, now before you get too excited, Bill, just before you do that, let's check the locomotive on its own first. We should just be able to make the train run by turning the control knob like... So, and we're off. And we're off. We're off. Great. Does the power controller also control the speed? Yes, and the direction. And just to make it all the more realistic, on the other side of this cassette, we've got some real, authentic train sounds which you can play while you operate the train jet. Fantastic. Right, now that's everything set up, what about maintenance? Well, there are a couple of things you should do. Keeping the rails clean is quite important. You'll find that the locomotive, after time, will start to deposit a little bit of grease and dirt on the track. Uh -huh. I assume that won't help the electrical connection. No, it doesn't. And you may get a bit of slipping underneath the wheels, so it's a good idea to get a Scotch pad. What, you mean the kind you use for washing up? The very same. And just rub that around the surface of the rails. You only have to do it occasionally, but it will just keep them clean. You'd be surprised at the amount of dirt that actually comes off the rails. Whatever you do, don't use anything abrasive, as that could damage the coating on the rails, and if that happens, they could rust quickly. OK. Now... What if our locomotive didn't work when we tried it out? What could we do? Well, there are one or two checks to carry out. First, check the mains plug. Make sure that it's got a 3-amp fuse in it. And make sure that it's pushed firmly into the wall socket and that it's switched on. Next, check that the twin grey lead to the power connecting clip is inserted firmly and that the clip itself is making good contact with the rails. And is that it? Well, if it still doesn't appear to work, then it could be that one or more of your fish plates aren't connected right. So just check that the track's properly aligned and joined up. Go all round it. And last but not least, see that the locomotive wheels are actually in contact with the rails. And that's it. If you have any other problems, the most likely culprits are the locomotive and the mains power controller. So if you've already checked those and had no joy, take just those items back to your Hornby socket for him to check out. There's a list of appointed service users inside the box here. OK, well, I'm sure we'll enjoy this set for some time to come, but sooner or later, we might want to make it bigger. <laughs> well, no, that's the beauty of starting with a set like this, of course. This is just the beginning. From here, we can start to add more tracks, more carriages. In fact, 
What we'd all like to end up with, I'm sure, is a really authentic-looking model railway. You know, with stations and people just like the real thing. Yeah. So whether it's a branch line or a busy station like Victoria or Clapham Junction you're aiming for, there's really no limit to how far you can go, is there? Absolutely not. This is great, isn't it? Look, just imagine, eventually, we could have the main line station with all sorts of passenger trains coming through. Well, it's good for and what about over there? Well, I hope you've managed to get your layout set up successfully. And don't forget to turn the tape over for those great sound effects on the other side. I'll say goodbye for now. I think I'm going to go and play trains.